Intro, boss. All right. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're here at NXL World Cup 2023, and we're here with the one and only Russell Jackson from Shocker Paintball. We finally got our hands on the Shocker era, and Russell's here to do a little intro, talk to you guys about the marker. So we'll see you guys after the intro. Hi right, Russell, so we're here, we've got the red. I like the fact that it's a red gun. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> we had to pick, flag, baby. We had to pick one to bring over, so I figured it was the most fitting. Um, yeah. We'll start from the outside in. One of the cool things about the era, and the reason it's called the era, is we tried to pay homage to all of the pre uh, precursing shockers. Yep. So you see the knurling on the back, which is a throwback to the, like the shoebox shocker yep. of the day, the, uh, the midship, uh, Echo, which is kind of like the NXT, yeah. and then the overall smooth body. Like Extremely the, smooth, I got uh, to hold it. Like SFT. the SFT. Yeah. And then to tie in the Freak branding, you have the uh, the uh, cross-hatching grip. The reason we did this is because unlike knurling and other things like that, knurling can tend to break down over time because you have those very pointy tips okay. that you know, the animal will wear off of. Yeah. With these slots, you get all the grip, but it's very easy to clean out. You can wipe it one way with a rag and all the dirt's coming out. So you get the grip without having to worry about damaging any of those things. Okay. Um, other thing, we took ahead, went ahead and added a significant amount of texture to the front and rear grip. You can see we reshaped the front grip. The internals of the rag are the same. They, you know, they've been proven. They're very reliable. So any shops or yourself that have spare parts for your any of the previous shockers, you'll be able to rebuild the rag. The ASA, um, a lot of people have wondered uh, why we stayed with the knob. We redesigned the knob and the internals so that it's going to stay locked under pressure. So as soon as you put tank pressure against it, it actually locks that knob in place. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a lot less likely to come out. And then we went toolless on the rebuild. So if you look inside oh. the ASA, there's a simple plug. You can reach in there with a pick, yank it out, change the two air rings, put it back in. So you have a very easy uh, service on the rig itself. Okay. That's forward thinking. And then really big changes. Um, the two most common leak points in previous generations of shocker was between the body and the frame and the frame and the ASA. That's because those O-rings were exposed to full pressure and they were threaded in with Loctite. Loctite itself does tend to weaken around 110 degrees. So when a player would leave the gun in their uh, car and it would get baked, it would uh, weaken the Loctite and over time you might develop a leak. Gotcha. So what we developed with the Era is what we call a floating air tube. So the air tube actually floats between the frame and the body and between the frame and the ASA. So even if those objects are loose, it will not leak to the point where you can have the ASA so loose you can see daylight between it and it still won't leak. Really? Wow. And the idea with that is, is that if you're on the field and you feel something loose, you can address it after the point as opposed to being out at the point. Right, right. Um, everybody obviously wants to know about the bolt. Yep. The bolt twist lock, the twist lock mechanism is nearly identical to the previous ones. We've uh, made some changes to make it a little smoother and shorten the twist by just a few millimeters to make it a little quicker to get out. I, it was noticeable though. I felt it when I, when I had one earlier. Yeah, it's got a good feel, good engagement. Um, I do like the back cap a lot. I do too. Anything that you see in black on the kit has not changed um, from the amp. Um, that's not to say that it's bad. Or it just didn't need to be updated. Just, it, it was well done. Changed. You know, yeah. This is an air chamber. There's only so many things you can do in air chamber, stylistically or machining wise. So it wasn't changed. All the blue components are new for this bolt system. Externally, the one you'll notice first is this little yep. O-ring up here. Yep. Now we've had that on the previous markers, but it didn't have a slot. So now it has two positions. This position is going to restrict the most flow, which is going to give you the softest shot. And then you can move it to this back position, oh. which is going to increase flow and allow the gun to work in extreme cold and in more extreme temperatures. Is that going so, to affect the wow. efficiency at all? It does not affect efficiency whatsoever. It's simply with the speed that the air enters that stage. Gotcha. Okay. So speaking of stages, we did reevaluate how the bolt moves. Um, the bolt accelerates from stop much slower than previous generations. So when you uh, have that impact on the ball, especially with brittle paint, yeah. you're not going to see the fractures in the ball that produce the barrel breaks. You're going to have less chamber breaks and less barrel breaks as a result of that accelerating a little bit slower. Okay. Then another major change you can see here on the front cone, this yeah. is what we call our positional cone. 
What it does is previous shockers, we designed the ball detents to essentially face the ball into the bolt face, okay. so move the ball back. Yeah. Uh, and that works up to a certain point, but when you get to very, very small paint, six, seven, nine, and below, you do still have some roll around. Right. So what this does is it eliminates that Which can Which can cause affect, pinching. Affect paint handling, right? Because Especially in mech, because mech has such an erratic fire rate, you might be shooting 14 balls a second at once and then slow down to 10 and then back up to 14. So having that ball stack directly on top of each other is gonna limit break. And that's what this does, is it actually moves that ball stack so that every ball, regardless of size, between this and the detents is located directly under the feed tube. So you have zero chance of rollback. Okay. So you're going to get uh, excellent paint handling. The best way I can explain it is if the amp was an 8 out of 10 on paint handling, this is a 10 out of 10. This is the best that we've ever produced outside of the TM40. Yes. Is, um, obviously a 10 the out flagship out of 10. marker, a 10 and out of 10. I'll, and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I never thought the paint amp didn't handle paint well. I was going to say, it's one of the so. best that I've ever no, like, and we, handled. And we, so. and we really enjoy that, but one of the teams we sponsor is AC Diesel, and uh, the guy who owns that team is Greg Pauly. Greg Pauly also happens to be a major player for GI. So he's able to get some of the most brittle paint in the world to yeah. test with us. So what our goal was to satisfy him that he could shoot anything GI produces for his team. Gotcha. And in fact, last weekend they were shooting a 679 ball. Yesterday they were practicing the 691 ball. Zero changes to the gun and they were shooting excellent for those guys. Okay. So that was something that we wanted to achieve that you could go from a small ball to a big ball and not have any difference in uh, ball handling and that's what we shot gotcha. here. Okay. Um, so you obviously have the cap and then I was discussing earlier changing the stages. You'll notice that the, the shaft, prop shaft is significantly changed and again that changes the timing of the shot. One of the advantages uh, we picked up recently is uh, Ryan Moorhead um, of Houston Heat joined our development team. Uh, late last year so he was instrumental in being able to tune the shot on this marker so we now have the ability to prototype fully in-house so we could build this bolt from scratch in-house with our machine 50 different times and test all of them you got it so we were able to put a bolt in Ryan's hands let him go shoot it and I'd like it to do this that or the other thing our engineers are able to adjust it and within 20 minutes he's got a part to go try I was just again. gonna say just my own morbid curiosity like how quick does that happen like how many minutes to do a piece wow okay wow. nice okay. so because we also have an in-house engineer who works right by the machine he's got a you know a master's degree in, in uh, engineering as well as being a machinist so when Ryan says oh this needs to do that they can sit down hash it out and yeah. really that's pretty like sweet that. that's that's uh so that's a huge advantage it's a nice little gained. setup um so that covers the bolt um as i said the feed tube did not change uh like i said a lot of what's being done here is massaging based on player feedback you'll notice this uh, serration here at the back of the grip frame. i did we extended the grip frame slightly um, oh. so i noticed you a lot of we noticed a lot of players were using drop back rails and drop down rails and uh, ac diesel a lot of the players were using extended tanks in order to get some more space in there so what we did is we split the difference we looked at one of those rails cut it in half essentially okay. and added that to the bottom of the grip frame. So it's not as tall as a full rail, but it's somewhere in between for those players and you'll just notice that in that little cut out there. So Joel, you being a taller player, you'll probably notice that off the bat if you ever yeah, get when to I, use one. So I hold my gun low. You do? Like this. So it fits well. The one thing that I didn't like is the knob got in my way, got in the way when I was holding it. But as you can see, when I wrap my finger around like this. Now you're up top. Yeah, it doesn't. So that's a sweet I update. This, I love the trigger. I kind of figured I would. I love <laughs> One of the things that is kind of difficult to show you, but I'm sure uh, I'll show you in another video, is the board's been redesigned. And that's one of the reasons why the trigger feels so nice, is we've gone to a, what's called a long arm micro switch. So the micro switch is about twice as long in the lever as it was before. But in doing that, we're able to put a wall behind the micro switch. So one of the more common uh, errors that we have, whether it be a player misadjusted the trigger, and they damage the micro switch. Yep. Now, regardless of how you adjust the trigger, you're not going to damage that micro switch. Oh, so you paintball player proofed it <laughs> until somebody finds a new way yeah, right. yeah, yeah. we'll <laughs> see <laughs> time will tell on that i believe there's an expression about a mouse trap <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, so what we did is we took literally hundreds of players' feedback and tried to roll it into it. Is the era, you know, a completely new platform? No, but it is better in every quantitative way than the amp, which is really what our goal was. So let's talk about two things, because I'll be honest with you, the, the eye covers and all that stuff, I've seen a lot of people give feedback about the fact that there's no toolessness. Absolutely. How the shot, obviously we'll be doing videos on this. Yes. Yeah. But 
and efficiency. So efficiency is going to be almost identical to the amp. Okay. Operating pressure is almost identical to the amp. There's a certain point where you can't make things better, and, right. and we've kind of reached that point. That being said, the shot signature is significantly quieter, okay. and because the bolt accelerates slower in its first stage, you'll have perceptible less uh, recoil. Okay. Now, recoil is relative to paintball and you know how long your tank is and all sorts yeah. of things like that, but yeah. the physical mass is moving slower, so there should be less uh, okay. recoil with it. Okay. As far as the tooled eye covers and the tooled ASA, there's a fairly simple explanation for that. We aren't willing to compromise on the performance, so the components of the bolt, the way we machine things, the way things are anodized, so we end up having to find cost savings in assembly. So when you look at something like the ASA on here, you have two parts, a knob and a body. That's very simple to machine, it's very simple to assemble, that brings the cost down. Same thing with the eyes. If you look at you know, the uh, latch system on the Lux, there's four parts and two magnets. So that's significant yeah. machining, significant yeah. assembly, and that adds to the cost. Yeah. So people ask, well, why do those things there? Well, that's where we're saving the money. That's how we're making this a sub-thousand dollar gun. You have to have a differentiation by, in the market, making right? making some things a little simpler. Okay. And it's, it's not even about differentiating the Lux from the Shocker. If, if, it made, if we could hit the price point, under thousand dollars we would but you know as we look at the industry we look at the world as a whole more and more expensive is not the way to go yep. right we want the shocker has been and always will be in my mind the blue collar tournament guy. yeah yes. the guy that pays for his own paint is probably shooting one of these right, right. And, you're right <laughs> and that's really why you'll see things like the eye cover and the, the ASA stay the way they are until we're able to find a way to make this work in economy of scale and still keep the price. What about the connection between the upper board and the lower board? So the connection between the upper board and lower board has changed slightly. If you can get a close up right here, you can okay. see that that connection is now shrouded. Okay. So what could happen in the amp, if you got bunkered or you were wet and whatnot, yep. there was a That's space where, where water could seep between the frame and the body or even paint. Um, but now that's completely shrouded so that the body comes down over the grip frame. There's no way that it can intrude in there. So that has been made more reliable as well. Okay. All right. So like I said, we really took as much feedback as we could from players of all divisions. And really this is a incremental improvement over the amp in every way that we could actually conceptualize. Yeah. Obviously the bolt was so good in the amp. There's only so much we can do. That's why you saw the minor changes in staging. That's why you see the advancement cone. They're not huge changes, but you know, the body, Pays homage to all the old shockers. Back cap was something that people wanted to see a lower profile one of. They I do like the back cap. I it's like really attractive. Cap. And to be honest with you, I love the feel of this trigger. Yeah. I, and I kind of, when I looked at it, I'm like, I think I'm gonna like this trigger a lot. And I and I do. Yeah. So you'll notice it's moved a bit more forward in the frame, um, as opposed to the uh, the scythe style of the previous generation. It's not magnetic at all, is it? It still has a magnetic uh, breakaway. It does. Okay. Um, but by using the the longer micro switch, we're also able to raise this, which is going to reduce water intrusion um, okay. in the system as well. So, what about Mac? Mac, um, because we went to that floating uh, body to frame port that eliminates Loctite, makes it more leak, uh, less leak prone. We will have to have a new Mac frame, and that'll be out uh, by spring. Okay. By spring. So do not put your CC frame on this thing. It just won't fit. <laughs> yeah, you it can't. won't fit. But there will be, I mean, you guys are known for being in the Mac world, obviously. Yeah, it, it was a major play. In fact, the, the, as I mentioned before, that ball stack uh, cone makes a major difference in Mac because of it. It's going to keep that ball more centered, especially because people tend to use less advanced loaders. They're using, you know, older Virtue loaders yeah. or JT loaders yeah. or what have you that don't have the force yeah. right, to keep up with the rate of fire. So this is going to kind of help that a lot. Gotcha. Well, I will say it feels, it feels really good. Um, I'm super excited to shoot it because I think yeah. that's, uh, that's one of the things that's always kind of set the shocker apart in my opinion. Doug and I have done a ton of videos. Yep. Doug shoots an amp. I do. I, I, I have it here. And all that stuff. So I'm just, because I thought the amp was a great shooter. So yeah, we decided to shoot this thing. Taking nothing away from the amp. It yeah. was absolute best effort we could do. And then, you know, you add a new person to the team. Like I said, we added Ryan. Yep. So we were able to take it the next step further and really tune the shot to make it that much better. Right. And then literally we had the, uh, the amp for three years and every piece of feedback we got from every level yeah. is rolled into that deck. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, stay tuned, guys, because we'll be doing all kinds of shooting and comparisons and all that stuff. So Joel, and, awesome. and, and what about a link? Where should they find a link? Oh, the link? Yeah. Uh, in the description. There you go. <laughs> and obviously, if you want to buy one of these, go down to the description, buy yeah, it. That's right. All right. Sounds all right. good. See you guys. See you guys. <laughs>